Lee Dundas here. I want to talk to you today a little bit about a recent declaration of a national emergency by President Trump to deal with the threat of interference in U.S. elections and how this intersects Trump's legal team statements in the last 48 hours on the election uh, irregularities, if you will, and what this all means taken as a whole. So recently, Donald Trump issued an executive order that I was actually not familiar with entitled Imposing Certain Sanctions in the Event of Foreign Interference in a United States Election. In that order, he noted that people had the ability to interfere in or undermine public confidence in United States elections. These are direct quotes. This ability included, and I quote again, the unauthorized accessing of election and campaign infrastructure, which was defined to include information and communications technology, as well as systems used by or on behalf of the federal government or a state or local government in managing the election process, which specifically, if you look at the definitions of what this all sort of devolves down to, includes, and I quote again, voter registration databases, voting machines, voting tabulation equipment, and equipment for the secure transmission of election results. Trump further noted, a point I'll come back to later in this little uh, piece, that people had the ability to interfere with elections through, quote, distribution of propaganda and disinformation, end quote. The president went on in later paragraphs of the executive order to state that the, quote, proliferation of digital devices and Internet-based communications has created significant vulnerabilities and magnified the scope and intensity of the threat of foreign interference. And then he opined that such constituted, quote, an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security of the United States, after which he unequivocally concluded I hereby declare a national emergency to deal with this threat. I repeat, Donald Trump, by way of executive order, said, I hereby declare a national emergency to deal with this threat. How is this threat to be dealt with? Well, within 40 days, uh, sorry, 45 days after the, quote, conclusion of a United States election, an assessment will be conducted to determine whether a person or entity acted on behalf of a foreign government for the purpose of interfering in that election. That assessment shall be delivered by, and I quote, the Director of National Intelligence to the President, as well as, quote, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Treasury, the Secretary of Defense, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Homeland Security. Thereafter, this report, a report will be sent identifying the extent to which any foreign interference that targeted the election infrastructure materially affected the security or integrity of that infrastructure or, or, and I quote again, the tabulation of votes or the timely transmission of election results and further identifying the extent to which such activities materially affected the, quote, security or integrity of the infrastructure through alteration or through straight up, quote, falsification of data. Who runs afoul of this executive order with foreign election interference in our U.S. elections? Any person who engaged in any foreign interference in a U.S. election or, or who was found to have materially assisted, sponsored, or provided financial, material, or technological support for that interference. What happens to these entities who did these bad deeds? All property that is in the United States, or later comes within the United States, or that later comes within the possession or control of any United States person is blocked. I repeat, the evildoer's property if it is within the control of any sort of purview of the U.S., is blocked. And what that means is such property may not be, quote, transferred, paid, extor uh, exported, withdrawn, or otherwise dealt in. One of the other scary paragraphs of this executive order allows the Secretary of State or the Treasury Secretary to assess, quote, whether additional sanctions against foreign persons may be appropriate, including proposed sanctions with respect to the largest business entities or, uh, sorry, largest business entities, entities licensed or domiciled in a country whose government authorized, directed, sponsored, or supported election interference, including 
at least one entity from each of the following sectors, financial services, defense, energy, technology, and transportation, or if inapplicable to that country's largest business entities, sectors of comparable strategic significance to that foreign government. Translation, it allows additional sanctions under this executive order for the United States to go in and hit any foreign country's major sectors and the major businesses in those sectors that contributed to this foul play. So I want to break this order down and I want to break down the timing. Trump declared this state of emergency in 2018, September 12th, 2018, six months after he had a chance to watch the midterm elections play out and determine if there was any funny business going, uh, going on in those elections. Is that a coincidence? I doubt it. Moreover, this executive order is not child's play. Any lawyer who reads this, this uh, order can tell you that. It directs the Director of National Intelligence to conduct a threat assessment that gets delivered to AG Barr and to Trump and to the Secretary of State and to the Secretary of Defense, who up until last week was Esper and who was let go by Trump. Again, a coincidence? I doubt it. The executive order allows you to impose sanctions on foreign entities who interfered. So let's deconstruct right now this little foreign piece, shall we? According to Bloomberg, Dominion Voting Systems is Canada's largest election system provider, and the company is based in Toronto, Canada. Does that sound like a domestic company or a foreign company? Cytel, according to Forbes, was founded in 2001 in Spain, and according to Wikipedia, Cytel grew out of a cryptography research project at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. In Cytel's press release, again, not exactly a domestic-sounding entity, more like a foreign entity, right? In Cytel's own press release, it notes that it continues receiving electoral and industry expert recognition from a variety of organizations, including a company known as OVUM. Ovum's research analyst is Nishant Shah, who lists an affiliation with Global Business Coalition. And guess what, folks? Global Business Coalition had as its founding supporter, you guessed it, George Soros. Cytel's research analyst Shaw is also connected to the Acumen Foundation, on which board George Soros' daughter sits. There's an interview with Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert that if you haven't, you guys haven't seen, I really suggest you watch. There's also a recent interview with Sidney Powell a day and a half ago that you should watch. If you haven't caught it, I'm going to give you select quotes that I think are particularly interesting, given that we now know we've been in a national emergency that was declared two years ago over foreign election interference by President Trump. Powell said, so if you want to talk about foreign election interference, we certainly have it now. We have staggering statistical evidence. I repeat, she said, we have staggering statistical evidence. And for fraud this serious, I think even if, if the states are stupid enough to certify the votes where we know the machines were operating and producing altered election results, if they are stupid enough to do that, then they will be set aside by the fraud also. And she concluded that interview by reminding people that these are federal felonies altering a vote or changing a ballot is a federal felony, end quote. There's an also an interview by Trump attorney Lynn Wood, who is doing a substantial amount of litigation right now in Georgia to ensure the election integrity there. And he said, will I, do I think this will be resolved by the courts? Yes. This is a quote. Yes, but I don't believe it necessarily has to be resolved by the courts before the people in this country fully recognize by the irrefutable evidence that the Joe Biden votes were fraudulent. It will be confirmed by the courts in terms of the illegality of the fraud. He went on to talk about the fact that the Georgia state election may be so alloyed at this point that it is unrecoverable. And in that case, it would probably be set aside by the Georgia courts and then the Georgia legislature would be weighing in. The last thing that I wanna to touch on before wrapping this little piece up is something President Trump noted in the first sentence of the executive order. He said that the elections could be altered by the quote, distribution of propaganda and disinformation. And on that note, Trump's attorney Lynn Wood, coincidentally or not, stated yesterday, let me give you some really good news about CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, oh boy, CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, The Atlantic, you name it. 
And then he went on to talk about what would occur to those media outlets in relatively short order. Again, is this coincidence? I don't think so, folks. I'm going to end it on the note that he ended it on. This is a, quote, new day in America. I want everybody to feel better about this because it is all going to end good. Justice will be served. And this country will return to being a country of truth.